in our previous video we talked about um, all gather all gather v and all reduce uh, all those um, all those um, uh, MPI transactions actually involve some kind of movement that allows you to actually uh, transfer data uh, among all the different ranks uh, in a communicator so uh, in this video we're going to talk about um, another this kind of a uh, function that's called all to all and all to all has some similarity with uh, uh, all gather but the difference is also uh, obvious so in an all gather call suppose it different rows in this matrix actually represents different uh, uh, ranks so on rank 0 you have a data that's a on rank 1 you have a data that's b and then on ranks uh, two, you have a data C. So in an all gather calculation, all, in an all gather communication, basically every rank contributes its own data to a common data set, and that common data set is going to be A, B, C, D, E. That's just contains all the different pieces from every uh, rank, and this common data set is then duplicated on every rank. That's called that's called that's called all, all gather. That's called all gather, and we have a variation that's called all gather v. So if different rank is going to contribute a different amount of data to the common data set, right? Then that in that case we're going to use gather v. The all to all call, the all to all function call, is more like this kind of scenario. So on each individual rank, again, a one row represents a, a, a separate rank. So on rank zero we have big A, small A, one, arva, and then the the spade, right? Um, and then on rank um, one you have a big B, small B, two, beta, and another thing, right? The thing is that uh, what you want to do is to actually distribute. Uh, for example, on rank zero you would like to distribute its own data to different other ranks. So what you want to do is to still keep rank zero still wants to keep big A to itself, but give small a to rank one, and then give one to rank two, give alpha to rank three. It wants to do this kind of a calculation. So, so this is called all to all. Basically, um, the data on different ranks are going to be given to 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 different other ranks. So if you look at the result. Basically, the, the data on rank A, uh, uh, on rank zero, has been distributed among all those different ranks, and then the data on rank one has been distributed on different ranks also, and then the the data on rank two being distributed over all the different ranks. So, if different ranks has its own data that it wants to give to the other uh, ranks, then you have to do a all to all call instead of a uh, or gather call. So, so the difference is in terms of the results. In all in all gather calls, it's the common data set that's being actually duplicated on every rank. But in all to all call, it's not. It's not the. It's not a common data set. The final result, the collect the receive buffer is going to be different on different on different ranks. So the content in the receive buffer receiver buffer is going to be different on different ranks and that's called an all to all call and if you want to look at the syntax the syntax is um, is uh, relatively straightforward right and all to all so you every rank is going to have a same buffer right every rank is going to have a same buffer that has its own data that do, and 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 every rank wants to distribute that data to different ranks to different other ranks, and then send count how many data you're actually sending, and then send type, and then you will need a receive buffer, receive buffer to receive the data that's coming from other ranks, and then receive count. So this is actually the amount of data you are actually receiving from one individual other rank, basically, and then you have another data type, in, uh, uh, the, the 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 data type for the incoming data. So now let's look at how we can actually uh, write an example. Write an example, and in this example, we're gonna just do like a. Uh, so every rank is gonna have 
a CN buffer that has just the two integers in it. And then we're going to see what's going to happen after we actually done this old all call. Right? So let me make another directory. Let's just call it old all. Then I'm gonna uh, uh, just type all to all the CPP. So again, I'm going to use some random numbers. Uh, I'm going to use the integers. So I'll write a function that's called a get random int that's going to generate a random integers uniformly distributed between a min value and a uh, max value. And I'm going to use the new recommended way for. Uh, generating random numbers so first a random device and then the random engine and then uniform int distribution int distribution int and then that's going to be a uni from min to max and then return uni rng that's my run, uh, integer random number uh, generator and then I'm gonna do my write my main size equals to the guess size and then auto MPI rank equals to MPI C O M M com world get a rank and then sync send count I'm I'm gonna use a send count equals to two so every rank is going to prepare two random integers in its send buffer and then it's going to send it to every other rank. Uh, so vector int send buff. So how large is the send buff? No, I think I said it wrong. It's not it's not every rank is going to prepare two numbers. It's going to Rank is gonna pre prepare two numbers for every rank. It's gonna prepare the so rank zero is gonna prepare two numbers for for itself. It's gonna prepare two numbers for rank one. It's gonna prepare two numbers for rank two. So it's um, so every rank has to prepare uh, MPI size times C N count. And then I'm gonna initialize it to zero. So basically. For every rank, it's going to prepare this many random integers. And then it's going to send to every other rank this amount. Right? So CN buff is going to be uh, this size. MPI size times CN count. Right? Because, uh, because MPI, you, it's for, for every rank, you're going to send, send two, two numbers. And then you you have MPI size this many ranks in total, so every rank has to prepare this many data, this many integers, and then now let's let, let's fill up fill up fill up the the array with random numbers. Uh, I want two digit random numbers that goes from ten to ninety nine. 
here I am actually using a reference, so it's an auto reference. So the iterator is actually a reference indexing to reference looping, uh, uh, sort of looping through every element inside of C and above. It's a reference, so every change I make to the reference is going to be reflected on the actual data in the C and buff buff. And doing that allows me to actually initialize C and buff to fill up the C and buff with all random integers, uh, this many random integers basically, right? And uh, if I want to look at, if I want to look at the, if I want to look at the content of the C and buff, uh, I, I can I can I can do a screen dump, um, display C and buff on every rank. But I'm gonna write this piece of code later on because it's gonna involve some. Uh, CNN and receive calls. Um, I'm gonna write that piece of code uh, a little bit later, a little bit later. But before, before, before we display the any kind of do any kind of display, let's let's try to complete. So before the auto auto to all. We must prepare the receive buffer. So how large is going to be the our receiver buffer has to be? So we're going to receive two pieces of integer from every other bank, and we have two integers for our own, right? So 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 the size of the receive buff buffer has to be MPI size multiply Send count two. Send count, and then we're going to initialize everything to zero, and then MPI auto all. the send buffer address, and then the send count, and then MPI int. That's it, and then receive buffer. Uh, same, same count also. It's actually ex expecting two numbers per rank, per other rank. And then MPI and boom. Right. And then we should write some code for displaying the receive buffer. Display receive buffer. So, so let's see how we can actually uh, Data in a random at the same time, printed first. So, every rank is going to send its rank zero. So rank zero is gonna do the because there's only one rank that's gonna print to the screen, so there's no uh, any kind of a conflict. It's gonna be just a printing out the data uh, one from from one rank at a time. So let's um, let's uh, let's try to a piece of code. So the idea is basically every rank, so if MPI rank not equal to zero, so if it's not the zero rank, zero rank, then it's gonna send the data, send its own data to. So I'm gonna use MPI COMM world dot send, and then the buffer I wanna send is just the, the send buff, the address of send buff. And then the size is going to be cn buff dot size. And then MPI int. And then zero zero. So I'm going to send all the data to zero's rank, and then the message tag is zero, right? So that's for every rank that's not the zero's rank. Otherwise, if it is the zero's rank, then I have to uh, do some slightly more complicated
So the first thing I'm gonna do is to print my own data because it's rank zero. Rank zero is supposed to be printed. The data on rank zero is supposed to be printed earlier, right? Uh, the earliest. So so I need to print uh, its own data, rank zero, and then four. Auto v goes through C and above. And then I'm gonna just do a C out V and then spell by space and then C out end of line. C and buffer. And then I need a vector to actually receive the data that's being transferred over from other ranks. So I'm I'm gonna need another vector int, I'm just gonna call it buff. And then the size is should be uh, uh, C and count, it should be MPI size. Multiply CN count, right? Because every other CN buffer, the CN buffer on every other rank is supposed to have uh, is uh, is supposed to have this kind of size. So once they send the data over it, the receive buffer must be at the same same size, right? And then I can just uh, I can just uh, receive all those um, all those data that's being transferred by other ranks, but I have to do that in a loop. But I have to do that in a loop because uh, how many CN do I have in the system in the entire community? I have MPI size subtract one. This many CNs, right? I must have, uh, so on rank zero. My, on rank zero, I must have this many receives. MPI size subtract one. This many receives. So I have to do a loop. I'm gonna loop through the source rank. I'm gonna call it comma iterator src rank. So it's gonna go from one. Because I don't have to receive a message from my uh, from my own rank. That's rank zero, right? And then SRC rank has to be smaller than MPI size. And then SR uh, plus plus SRC rank SRC rank, right? Okay. And then MPI com wall dot receive see RCV. And then the buffer, the address of the buffer, and then buffer dot size. That's the the number of integers that we're gonna try to receive. And then the type, and then the source rank is src rank, right? And then zero. That's the message tag. And as soon as we received the message, we wanna print print to the screen. So that's gonna be rank uh, src. Rank. Um, and and I think that's the code for printing out the sand buffer, right? And then piece of code for displaying the receive buffer also. So after we have done the auto all buffer on every rank. And then let's see what's gonna happen, right? So what we have to change is to change the end buffer to receive buffer. Um, so here the uh, it's uh, it's sending the receive buff it's sending the receive buff to zero's rank and then uh, the zero's rank is printing out um, its own data. But before before we actually do that, let's try to see out something more. Uh, after all to all. The separator. This is just a separator to separate our printout from the previous printout, and then the zeros rank has to print out its own data, and then uh, its own receive buffer, and then initialize another vector. Oh, sorry, I missed the initialization value zero. I must have made the same mistake um, at the same place here. And uh, then it has to sort of loop through all the receiver ranks. And 
and putting it out. I think I've... Let's just use eight processes. All to all. So this part of the printout is actually the same buffers on every different rank, and then this part of the buff uh, printout is the receive buffers on every rank after all to all. So before we did all to all on rank zero, we can sort of see it's uh, this many numbers, right? It's supposed to be sixteen numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 numbers. And every other rank is going to get two pieces, get get two numbers, right? Every other rank is going to get two numbers. So 3692 is going to be kept to rank 0. 3692 kept to the rank 0. And then 9862 is going to go to rank 1. And then 8272 uh, is going to go to rank 2. Right, 8272. And then 3960 is going to go to rank 3, 3960. That looks like we're, uh, we have done the old all correctly. So on rank 1, the first two numbers are going to go to rank 0. Right. So the first two, first two numbers, 85, 18, has to go to rank 0. So 85, 18. Right. And then the second, the next two numbers, 30, uh, 30 15, is going to be kept to to, to rank one, kept on rank one, and then the next two numbers, 89, 75, gonna go to rank two, right? Uh, 89, 75, that goes to rank two, right? And then uh, 36, 27, go to rank three. Uh, 36, 27, go to rank three, right? And then so, so on, so forth. So that's all to all. That's all to all. And then all to all. Um, in our example, the all to all actually has a fixed size. The same, the same count is actually fixed uh, to two pieces, uh, two numbers, so to two integers per, uh, to two integers per rank. So when we did the all to all, when we did the all to all, it's the same count. Same count is basically just a two. It's just two numbers per rank. So we're f on every uh, on on rank um, on, for example on rank zero we have sixteen numbers, right? And then same count is two, which means that the the all the sixteen integers on rank zero are going to be distributed to every other rank, and every other rank is going to get two integers uh, per rank, right? So that's a fixed number. Suppose suppose rank zero wants to distribute its own data. To different ranks by different amounts. So suppose rank zero wants to distribute to give rank one five pieces of integer, five integers, but uh, want to give to rank two just uh, three integers or something. If I if I want to do that kind of an all to all, how do I actually do that? And uh, there is another choice that's called all to all v. So all to all v is just like uh, all v or uh, gather v, gather. V. Specify the amount of data that, that you want to distribute to different ranks, and then it also allows you to uh, to, to specify the the offset or the displace dis displacement uh, vector inside of the send buffer and inside of the receive buffer. Uh, so start and um, so the syntax is a uh, is uh, is a uh, is like that. So you're gonna need a send buffer on every rank, and then the send count is no longer just a single integer; it's an array. So this send count array actually is gonna specify uh, which rank is gonna get how many data, and that's send count. And then you're gonna need a displace 
segment uh, of offset vector offset array to specify the the position inside the scan buffer where you want to sort of start to send the data that goes to uh, different ranks and then the send the send data type and then you're going to have a receive buffer and then you'll have an array of receive counts which going to specify uh, the the amount of data that's coming to uh, my my rank um, from from every other different ranks, and then you're gonna need a another displacement array that's gonna specify where do we wanna place a position where where where, where you wanna sort of locate your your received data from from different ranks, and then the received data type. So again, let's look at an another example. Let's look at another example. So this time we're gonna write a different. We're gonna write a different source code. It's called O to O V dot CVV. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna copy over some of the codes I've already written for for O to O. Um, MPI finalize. And then return zero. So before we actually prepare the data, prepare the send buffer, let's try to decide how many integers we want to send to every other rank, right? So vector, I'm gonna I'm gonna construct a vector that's called a send count, S counts. Which S counts represent send counts so how many integers i want to send to every other rank so this is going to be a vector because uh, different uh, ranks are going to receive i'm going to send different uh, number of integers to different ranks so it's going to be mpi size so that's the size of the vector and then i'm going to initialize to zero and then i'm going to do a, a range four with a reference as counts um, v equals to get random int so i'm going to specify a range that goes from one to three so s counts are going to be filled up with random integers that goes from one to three or inclusive so it's either one or two or three so so my my current rank is going to send uh, the number of integers to is going to send integers to every other rank, and the the number of integers I'm going to send to every other rank is going to be specified in this particular vector that's called s counts. And inside of this vector, it's just the random numbers between one and three. So that's my uh, s counts. And then I need to specify another integer that's the receive count, r counts. It's still going to be um, MPI size. It's still going to be MPI size. So how do I actually uh, how do I actually uh, get the number of integers I am going to receive from every other rank, right? How can I actually fill up this particular R counts uh, vector? Um, the solution is that I can do a O to O call. So MPI C O M M W O R L D. All to all. And the center buffer is going to be the S counts. And then, if, so, so this S counts, this S counts, this vector basically specifies how many numbers I'm going to send over to every other rank. Right? R counts is actually just the transpose of S counts, basically. So how many numbers I'm going to receive from every other rank is actually the the transpose of the S counts, right? So if rank zero is going to send an S counts to every other rank, the, it's R rank, it's uh, it's R counts, the, the R counts on it on its um on its uh in its own memory is going to be so so if S counts on every rank 
on each rank is going to be a row vector. But if you consider all the ranks, the, the, if you put all those S counts together, it's going to be a matrix. R counts is just going to be the transpose of that. So let's um, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's do this old four, and then let's look at the, what's going to be the, uh, the the result. Hi. So let's just uh, do a quick printout. But let me let me grab some piece of code from the previous code. So the displacement the the display code so this time it's just going to display the the s counts and the r counts so this time i'm going to uh, it's not seen above right it's not seen above it's actually a C, it's actually a s count s counts And then this is not a C and buff. It's it's a uh, C and buff with R counts. Right. And then uh, R counts. This is going to be S counts. Right. And then let's do a printout first. Let's do a printout first. MPI C plus plus dash STD equals to C plus plus 14 dash O. Uh, o to O V. O to O V dot CVP. C and count is supposed to be one. I forgot to actually uh, display C and count. So I'm gonna MPI run. I'm gonna use MP8 O to O V. So S counts. Rank zero is gonna be uh, it's gonna keep three numbers to itself. It's gonna send three numbers to rank one. Right? So rank one is supposed to get three so it, on rank one it's R counts uh, is supposed to be three for rank zero, right? So so that's three, right? So, so rank one is supposed to get three numbers from rank zero. So the first column for rank one is supposed to be uh, three, right? And then rank one is supposed to send one number to rank two, right? So the first column of rank two, the R accounts, is supposed to be one, right? And then it's going to send two numbers to rank three, right? So on rank three, it's R count is supposed to be the first element in R count is supposed to be two, supposed to be two, right? And then so on. So so eventually you are going to see that if the first row becomes the first column in the R count, the first row of the S counts becomes the first column of the R counts. Right. So it's exactly a transpose. So if you want to look at an arbitrary rank, for example, if you want to look at the 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 last the last rank, right? The last rank is going to give one number to rank zero. Right, so the R counts on rank zero. Its last column is supposed to be one, and then it's gonna give three numbers to rank one. So on rank one, the R counts is supposed to be three on the last column, right? And then it goes on zero, one, two. On rank two, it's supposed to give like three numbers, right? On rank two, the last number is supposed to be three also. So, so the last row becomes the last column actually. So that's that's S counts and R counts. But we're not done yet. But we are not. Yet. Once we have the S counts and R counts, 
we should be able to actually construct the displacement vector, right? Vector int s disp the CN displacement vector MPI size. I'm going to initialize everything to zero, and then vector int r disp MPI size zero. That's the two displacement or offset vectors uh, in the CN buffer and the receive for the receiver buffer, CN buffer and the receiver buffer, right? And then we can construct these two. We can actually put numbers into these two displacement vectors by just uh, using. Um, so, so I'm going to loop through every element in the displacement vector, but I'm going to start from the not the zeros, but the first uh, element because I know the offset vector for the zeros. So, so the first the the, the zeros index of the offset or displacement vector is supposed is always supposed to be zero, right? It must start from zero, and I have already initialized every element in the two vectors to be zero, so I don't have to sort of update uh, the zeros element in these two vectors. And then plus plus i. So s disp i is supposed to be s disp i subtract one plus s counts i subtract one. And then r disp i is supposed to be r disp i subtract one plus r counts i subtract one. And then I can start to prepare the CN buffer and the receive buffer to actually put real data into it. So how large our CN buffer must be, right? It's basically just a summation of all the numbers in S counts. So we can do the summation by using, so NS is going to be the total number in the whole numbers. And again, I'm going to use accumulate, accumulate. That's the CN algorithm. S counts dot begin the the the, the starting operator uh, starting iterator yes counts dot end the ending operator the the second iterator and then the starting value of the accumulation and then I need to know how many numbers I need to allocate for the receive buffer R counts begin and R counts dot end and once I have these two numbers, I can allocate my spaces. So, so vector int my CN buff. It's gonna have ns numbers, and then initialize everything to zero for auto auto reference v. That's in CN buff. I'm gonna uh, get a random int random gonna get a random int that goes from like 10 to a 99 and uh, that's my CN buffer so I've got my CN buffer already uh, constructed um, and then I can do auto OV right and then I can do auto OV but before I actually do the auto OV I need to allocate my receiver buffer to o V. So vector int I C V buff. It's gonna be A and R. I'm gonna initialize everything to zero. And then I can call my mode dot auto V and the N C N buff. The address of it. And then the C N count. C N and then the same same disp p the address of and then it's gonna be mpi int and then receive buff r counts and then r disp again mpi int and 
and we are done basically we are done so 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 let's display the CN buff and the receive buff also before and after the auto all and again I'm gonna use some codes uh, I'm gonna use the same display code so um, I could just uh, uh, wrap the display code in a separate function but uh, but it's uh, it's quite short so there's no it's not really necessary to do that so I'm gonna just, just gonna copy it over I'm gonna just, just uh, duplicate it I'm just gonna duplicate this piece of code um, so before auto o before the auto o v display the same path so instead of sending over s counts s counts i'm going to do same path um yeah i think that's um, that's all i need to change Then after auto O V, I want to display the receive buff. So all I have to do is change send buff to R E R E C V buff. going to be my buffer size my buffer size oh I see my buffer size is going to be different for different for different uh, for different ranks for the data that's actually coming from different ranks so can I actually do this can I actually do this uh, using uh, just a simple loop can I just do this on a simple loop C and buff So because each of the different ranks are going to send a different amount of data over, so I c my, 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 my buffer cannot be have a ha cannot be a just a fixed size anymore. It's, it used to be MPI size, but uh, looks like we cannot do that anymore. It used to be MPI size, so so I cannot do that anymore. And uh, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is that uh, before I actually send the send the buffer send the send buffer send the send buffer over. I'm gonna send the size of the. I'm gonna send the size of the uh, of the buffer. So I'm gonna define another var variable s count s count equal to c and buff. The size. That's gonna be the size of my c and buffer. And then I'm gonna do a mpi com wrld dot uh, c and then the c and buffer s count. And this is just a one integer. I'm gonna turn it to zero first, and then, and then on the zeros rank, on the zeros rank, uh, on the zeros rank, I will have to do like two receives. I will, I will have to do a two, two receives. So, uh, in the first receive, I must receive a R count equals to zero. And then MPI C O M M and then address of R count. Uh, address of R count. This is just a one integer. And then uh, SRC rank zero. Let's just call it zero. So once I have the R count, I can initialize my buffer vector using R count. And this time the R, the buffer vector has to be inside of the loop over all the different source ranks because for different source ranks it's going to have a different uh, it's going to have a different value for R counts for the R count and then after that after that I think I'm done right so let's just give it a try and uh, before we actually try it let's uh, turn off this receive buff display thing 
because um, no no there's no reason to turn it off on I, all I need to do is to just to get rid of it and then uh, let me just copy over this part of the code let me just copy over the sand buff the display for sand buff and then I can just replace sand buff with uh, uh, REC V buff. Then S count. So here S count equals to uh, the size of the receiver buffer, and then I sent the S count over to rank zero, and then I sent the receiver buffer over, right? And then uh, on rank zero, I received the R count first, and then initialize my buffer, and then. Let's give it a try and see if I made any mistakes. NPIC, right? Looks like I did. I didn't make a mistake. Um, not our count. It's our count. Our count, not our count. Same is true for here. So that's gonna be our result. So the sand buffer is gonna look like that. On rank zero, it's gonna be this many numbers, and then on rank one, it's gonna be this many numbers, right? And then let's look at uh, let's look at uh, let's look at the the counts. So rank zero is supposed to keep one number for itself. Send two numbers to rank one. All right, let's see if that's true. It's gonna it's gonna keep one number for itself. And then it's gonna send two numbers to rank one. Seventy seven forty four. That's the two numbers to rank one, right? And then rank zero is gonna send uh, two numbers to rank uh, two also. Uh two numbers to rank two. Two numbers to rank two. 40, 74, right? And then it's gonna send three numbers to rank 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Three numbers on, on rank 3. Three numbers on rank 3. Three numbers on rank 3. So 13, 10, 33. So it looks like uh, it's correct. So that's O to OV. And uh, and uh, when we actually were demonstrating O to O V, we also uh, reviewed some of the aspects about uh, MPI send and receive calls, those kind of point-to-point -point, uh, communications. And uh, that's O to O V, right? And then one of the subroutines I haven't talked about is the MPI barrier. MPI barrier is a synchronization routine, a synchronization function. So, so how do you actually use it, right? How do you actually use it? So, in my, uh, in this, in this particular piece of code, I can, for example, before I actually display the receive buffer, I can do a MPI, C O M M, world, dot barrier, right? So, so this, so so. Again, this barrier call is also collective, so it must be called on every rank in a communicator, right? So, what's going to happen is that every rank is going to reach this particular barrier call before they march to the next call together. So, so barrier is a synchronization point. So, 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 so no, uh, so, so. If there's some of the ranks that hasn't reached the barrier core yet, it's still way above it. It hasn't reached the barrier core yet. Every other rank is gonna wait for it. It's gonna wait for the slowest uh, rank, and until all the ranks has reached the barrier core, and then all the ranks are gonna move over. 
So, so let's. Uh, for this particular for this particular example, it's not going to have any kind of an effect, right? But it's just going to uh, it's just uh, it won't have any effect, but it won't sort of change the behavior of the code either. Um, so here is a diagram from from the web. I, I grabbed it from the web. Um, so at time t1, rank zero has reached the barrier, right? But it's not going to move further. It's just going to stay there and wait for other ranks. So at t at time t2, rank one and three has reached the barrier. But again, they are not going to move over the barrier. They are not going to keep executing. They are going to just wait over there and then wait for rank two to complete. Uh, to, to reach the barrier. So finally rank 2 has reached the barrier. Right? So by by T3 all four ranks in the communicator has reached the barrier. Right? And at this point, at this po only at this point all those processes, all those ranks are going to jump over the red barrier and then move on uh, to the next uh, execution. Uh, to the ne next uh, to to the next execution flow. So so that's called the barrier. It's also a collective call. So by now we have talked about uh, lots of different subroutines, lots of different functions provided by uh, the MPI library. They can be grouped into like two categories. One is called a, one is called collectives, or collective communication, and the other category is called point-to-point -point communication. The point-to-point -point communication is quite simple. It's just the send and the receive, right? This kind of point-to-point -point communication style doesn't actually involve all the, doesn't have to involve all the ranks inside the communicator. But for every other uh, functions that we have talked about so far, they are actually collective communication functions. And uh, all of the collectives we have talked about so far can be categorized into these uh, four categories. So the last category is just a barrier. It's a synchronization function. And the barrier function has to be used uh, very carefully before, because because if you actually place this kind of a barrier course almost everywhere in the code, then your code is going to be quite slow. It's a synchronization code, so it's going to affect the performance of your parallel code. So you have to sort of use it only at places that you have to use it. Otherwise, you might want to just avoid doing the barrier call. Right. And another thing is that every other collective course that's listed in this particular column is actually also a synchronization point so it's also a blocking uh, function so so every other co uh, collective communication course so it's just like a barrier it's uh, it's going to wait for every other rank to actually participate in the uh, in the in the call and the other three categories all to one one to all and all to all right so all to one we we talked about gather right that's all to one and then gather v, it's all to, all to one, and then reduce. One to all, we talk about broadcast, bcast. We talk about scatter and scatter v. And then all to all, we talk about all gather, right? All gather, and then all gather v. And then we also talked about all to all and all to all v. So, so collective communication and point to point communications are kind of a different kind of categories of um, communication styles. So in practice, you would prefer to use collective communications uh, over point-to-point -point communications, right? Um, even though even though you can actually implement all those collective com communications in terms of those point-to-point -point communications. So the point-to-point -point communication is more like the kind of assembly language of parallel computing. So almost every kind of communication can be implemented can be implemented using point-to-point -point communication, but it may, may not be as efficient as those uh, collective calls, collective functions like gather, uh, broadcast, or gather that kind of thing. Right. And if you uh, do some sort of more careful comparison of the advantages of the collective calls, uh, this is a, here here it's a quite accurate summary. That I got from uh, this particular uh, web address. So, the advantages of the collectives. The first advantage is in terms in terms of code readability and maintainability. So it's actually easier to write and reason about programs 
that use collective communications than the equivalent program using point-to-point -point communication. Right. For f if you if you write your code codes using uh, collectives, it's easier to read and it's easier to reason about the, the the programs. And then the collectives express the intent of the communication better. So so, for example, if you are trying to do a scatter operation, you have a collective function that's just called a scatter. And by using that function, you're telling other people, I'm doing a scatter. But if you actually replace the scatter call with your own point-to-point -point communication, then it's kind of difficult for other people to understand what exactly you are trying to do. Right? Collective calls, those function names are quite expressive. By just looking at the function names of the collective calls, you can actually figure out what's actually the intent of the, of the communication. And then the third point is that there are often far fewer collective operations needed to accomplish a task than point-to-point -point messages. So, so if you have a single all-to-all -all operation, you're going to need n square point-to-point -point operations, right? Making it easier to debug programs using collectives. By using collectives, all those kind of n square point-to-point -point operations has been sort of encapsulated, optimized, uh, right? Just inside of one function, right? And that function has been very well tested, very well uh, uh, debugged. So, 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 so you're going to need a fewer number of lines in your source code, which makes it even easier to debug your program by using collectives. So that's in terms of code readability and maintainability. And the second point is about performance. So those are, those are, those are MPI implementations of those uh, collective calls, collective functions. Have very have been very well optimized by taking uh, taking into account uh, the network topology and the different kinds of hardware that you are using for communication, right? And uh, it's actually th those optimizations are kind of a low level. It actually sort of taking advantage of hardware-based implementations of some collective operations. So it's not really that easy to actually uh, optimize by yourself or by by hand. Right? Those optimizations has been implemented. Um, by the library, right? Uh, and it's it's uh, it's important that we as a user to make the full use of it. And these optimizations are hard to implement directly over point to point without the knowledge already available in the MPI implementation itself. And then the third point, using collection uh, collective operations, can help improve the performance of pair programs, and make that performance portable to other clusters with different configurations. Right. So if you have different kinds of clusters with different kinds of uh, communication hardware, right? Uh, by, by when you actually install the MPI library and when, when you try to compile the MPI library on those different clusters, the the, the MPI library is going to figure out uh, the different kinds of communication hardware for you, and then it's going to implement its collective calls, its collective functions by taking advantage of those low-level hardware optimizations. So that makes your performance your optimization sort of portable to different kinds of uh, clusters. And uh, those are some of the key points, key points about the advantages of using collectives.